Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar on T-Bar management in Simple Fun 360. So we are officially at the end of our education week, and I'd just like to take this opportunity just to thank all of you that have been with us for the past couple of days as um, we were delivering these sessions, and hopefully you found them insightful as uh, we definitely had a lot of fun preparing and presenting these webinars for you. So if you've missed any of these sessions, what I'll do is I'll link our community post in the chat box, and uh, you can always revisit these recordings at any time. Uh, so that's just been linked for you in the chat box. Okay. And before we get started, just want to run through some housekeeping. So first note is that all attendees today will be on listen only mode, but if you have any questions at all, please do not hesitate to let us know using the Q&A function. So you'll find that on the bottom of your Zoom application. Uh, so I have here with me, Norman, Daniel, Cody, Sid, and two Anthonys here in the Q&A panel. Uh, so they've been with us in the past couple of days, so feel free to put in a hello in the Q&A, uh, but of course, pop in your questions as well at any time throughout today's session. And last but not least, this webinar today will be recorded, and you can find that in the community that I've just linked. Thank you. Now. Before we look at how T-Bar is prepared in Simple Fun 360, thought I'd just give a bit of background on what T-Bar actually is. Now, this is by no means a new concept. It has been introduced for a while. And essentially, T-Bar, or Transfer Balance Account Report, it is a way that the ATO can administer a member's transfer balance cap and that is a lifetime limit on the total amount of superannuation that can be transferred into retirement phase income streams. Uh, so just think of it as a way that the government can limit how much is in tax-free pension accounts. And before 1 July 2021, all individuals would have had a limit of 1.6 million. And after 1 July 2021, with the cap indexation, those individuals will now have a personal transfer balance cap between 1.6 mil to 1.7 million. And the great thing is that Simple Fund 360 actually does the calculation of a member's personal transfer balance cap for you. And I'll show you later on today on how it accounts for this. But for now, what you need to know is that T-Bar, it is a reporting obligation from 1 July, 2017 to report events that recognizes movements in a member's transfer balance account. Uh, so when you have a retirement phase income stream, a TBA or a transfer balance account will apply. And just think of it like a bank account. So where you are transferring amounts into the retirement phase, that is going to count towards the cap and will be a credit. And when you are transferring out amounts, that is going to be a debit. And those debit and credit events will need to be reported to the ATO, and that is your T-bar. And where your transfer balance account exceeds the personal transfer balance cap limit, that is going to be a breach. All right, so let's try to avoid that. Um, so now in terms of what to report, uh, we have a help article in our Knowledge Center that details debit and credit event types that affect the transfer balance account. Uh, so this will need to be reported to the ATO. Uh, so such examples include uh, starting a pension, processing a commutation, and uh, paying a lump sum benefit. And this is all from 1 July 2017. And some of these events will automatically trigger as we post those transactions. And I will show you how that will appear in our transfer balance dashboard as we are processing a fund. Uh, so I'll just post this link in the chat box, uh, but you can find this in the Knowledge Center as well. 
And um, over the past few days, I did find some questions in our previous webinars with regard to TRIS versus TRIS retirement phase. Uh, so just to let you know as well, with TRIS, it will generally be subjected to the tax at the 15% rate. So there is no TBA and not subjected to the general transfer balance cap. Whereas when you're looking at TRIS in retirement phase, uh, so where it has met a condition of release, it will be entitled to a pension earning exemption and therefore will have a transfer balance account and will be subjected to the cap. Uh, so just to clarify there, when you are dealing with a TRIS account, you won't need to report those events. Whereas when you're dealing with TRIS in retirement phase, that obligation arises to uh, prepare and lodge T-bar. Now, in terms of when to report, so the reporting timeframe, it is dependent on the total superannuation balance of members as at 30th of June of the prior year before the first member starts their first retirement phase income stream. So that is the ATS definition and uh, where any member has a TSB of 1 million or more, a quarterly reporting regime will apply. Whereas where all members of the fund has a TSB of less than 1 million as at 30th of June, uh, the events can be reported annually. And the system, it is smart enough to recognize your member's TSB and set a lodging due date. Although it is important to note that uh, the ATO does detail certain events that need to be reported earlier, regardless of TSB, uh, such as responses to commutation authorities. Now, once the reporting framework is set, it is fixed to the fund, uh, regardless of fluctuations to any of its members' balances. Uh, but that does not limit lodging those events as early as possible or uh, even as those events occur. And the ATO actually does encourage this as well. And the ATO has informed us that from 1 July 2023, all SMSFs will need to report those events on a quarterly basis regardless of TSP. Uh, so a year to go before that comes into play and the software, it will adapt uh, for those changes when they come. All right, uh, so let's see how this is applied in Simple Fund 360. So I'm going to demonstrate how the debit and credit events appear in the transfer balance dashboard which is also where you can make manual adjustments if need be. We're going to look at tracking a member's transfer balance cap and how the system actually accounts for changes that apply with indexation post 1 July, 2021. We'll then bulk prepare T-bar events in the T-bar management screen. And we'll look at the lodgement process as well and how to deal with canceling events. Okay, so I'm here in Simple Fund 360. So I'm simply going to navigate to the left-hand side menu, hovering my mouse over member, and then selecting the transfer balance dashboard. So this dashboard right here helps you track the net amounts that have been transferred into retirement phase for each member. So we have John and Mary Jones here who was already created in the system as members. For Mary, her TBA or uh, transfer balance account, that is a total of 84,440. So this is a net of debit and credit events, which is noted in the below section here. So we only have one credit event and it is with that exact amount. And uh, you also find that with certain debit and credit events, it will automatically flow through to this dashboard upon recording the transaction and during create entries. Uh, just a note here as well is that it is only for certain event types that will be an automatic trigger. Uh, so I've detailed this in this particular slide. Uh, so that is uh, your pension commencements, commutations, 
Div 293 and lump sum payments or rollovers. So that will be an automatic trigger as you are processing those particular transactions. But I will show you later on today on how we can manually post certain events. Okay, so we can also note her TSB, and that is a total of 422,000. And that is as at 30th of June. And the TSB or total super balance, that includes amounts in accumulation and retirement phase income streams. So that difference here between the TBA and TSB, it is sitting in her accumulation account for this particular fund. And that will form as part of her total superannuation balance. Now, Mary, she is just a member in this fund, but if she was a member in other funds in Simple Fund 360, both the TBA and TSB balance will also update. Now, a thing to note is that the system, it's not going to be aware of events or balances in member accounts outside of the software. So in this case, if you wanted to add an external balance uh, to ensure you've just got the right Lodgman D dates, you can click on add external TSB to put in an external balance as at 30th of June of year end. Now, in terms of events external to the fund, uh, so that may need to be reported to the ATO, you can click on add adjustment on the right-hand side, and that will enable you to enter in that event for the member. So for example, I have an event on the 1st of July, 2021. We can enter in uh, the Lodgman due date, uh, but the system, it will set that for you based on the member's TSB. We can put in the transaction type. Uh, so I'll just put in external sys. And we can select the member account code. So either the codes that are saved within the uh, fund itself, or we can select external to put in the external account code, the account type, and the status, whether it's opened or closed, and the external fund. So with this, it will need to be saved as a contact in the contact screen. So I already have the BGL corporate solution saved, and I can simply select that contact. With the event type, I'm just going to select SIS superannuation income stream, though various event types are also supported for manual adjustments. And I'm just going to put in a credit of 200,000. So now hitting add on the right hand side. So what we're doing here is that um, a pension has commenced in an external fund, and I'm simply recording a manual adjustment here to account for it. Okay, and so I can now go ahead and prepare a T-bar for those two events. And you can see here that it's updated the member's TBA. So that's another reason why you'd want to use the manual adjustment feature. It's where you can have updated figures and essentially track what's remaining in a member's transfer balance cap. Uh, so say, for example, a client was coming from a different software provider You've set up the fund in Simple Fund 360 and you know the events were already lodged. You can record those historical events by clicking on Add Adjustment, and that is across different financial years as well. And that's just so you have the updated amount in a member's transfer balance account. Or you can record the opening balance. So um, I've already done that for John Jones. I've done a manual adjustment here. And with the event type, I've just set that to be non-reportable event with the transaction type as opening balance. And I put in the TBA amount as a credit entry. So, uh, so that is a positive balance. Okay. So now what I'm just going to do is I'm just going to process a commutation for John Jones just to show you how those events are being triggered into the transfer balance dashboard. And in doing so, I'll show you how the system accounts for the cap indexation post 1 July, 2021. 
So now I'm just going to head to member on the left hand side and select member list. Uh, so if you're familiar with using Simple Fun 360 to process a commutation, I'm just going to head to the right hand side, clicking on member transactions and then selecting internal transfer or commutation. So we're commuting a pension account for John Jones. We're going to select his pension account and we'll put in the date of the transfer to be 1 July, 2021. We'll move that to a new accumulation account and we can edit the member code. Down below, I'll just click no for the entire balance being taken out and we'll put in 20%. Uh, so just to let you know as well, if you are processing a commutation partway through the year, just important to create entries to a day before commuting the account, just so that we have the updated member balances. All right, so down below, you can see here, we've got a transfer balance cap summary, and it's indicated that an event is going to be triggered. And here we have the cap limit, as well as the cap remaining after the transfer. And you can see here with the cap limit, it is a range between 1.6 to 1.7 million. Now, if I were to change the date of the transfer to be any date before 1 July 2021, so 2020, for example, you will see that cap limit, it will update to 1.6 million. So if you're wondering how the system is calculating the cap limit post 1 July 2021, it is a good question, and it is based on how much of the 1.6 million cap has been used up previously. And I have a slide here that details this. Okay, so there are three different scenarios and the system accounts for all of these. So if you have a member that has never had a pension before and is starting it for the first time on or after 1 July, 2021, the member will be able to utilize the full cap of 1.7 million. But if a member has had an existing pension and used up or exceeded the 1.6 million at any time, and emphasis here is on at any time, before 30th of June, 2021, the cap will remain at 1.6 million. But if the member hasn't used up the full amount of their transfer balance cap, that cap will be proportionally indexed based on the highest ever balance of their transfer balance account. Uh, so now we won't get into technicalities of it, but essentially if you have a member commencing a pension account for the first time on or after 1 July, 2021, it's very simple the system will recognize the 1.7 million cap. But with the other two scenarios, it would be necessary for the event history to be recorded in the transfer balance dashboard for the system to calculate uh, the personal transfer balance cap post 1 July, 2021. So that is to find out if the cap had been hit or exceeded at any time. And if it hasn't, those historic events will need to be recorded in the software for the system to recognize the highest ever balance and then calculate the cap limit in line with the indexation. So we do have a webinar that runs through the calcs involved in more detail. If you wanted more information, it is in the BGL YouTube channel and it's called the indexation of the general transfer balance cap. Uh, we've also written down a detailed help article based on references from the ATO, and it details how the software adapts to this as well. So I will link this in the chat box. Okay, so what I'm just going to do now is I'm just going to hit save for uh, my commutation here. So we'll post that to 1 July 2021. And uh, we're moving at 20%. And um, here you can see here, because it's from 1 July, 2021, the cap limit will be a range between 1.6 to 1.7 million, depending on how much of the cap has been used up previously. And so now just hitting save. 
And if I were to head back to my transfer balance dashboard, you will see that it will automatically appear. So here we have the member commutation. Okay. And so what you can do as well is that uh, if you have set up the fund like I have and you've recorded those historic T bar events, what you can actually do is you can click on calculate personal TBC on the right hand side. And that is if you are in the 2022 financial year. And so clicking that option there and uh, down below, you will see the calc that the system has processed. So it's looking at the highest ever balance in this case, and it's calculated the cap limit post 1 July 2021. And you have the flexibility in it changing that. So you can click on that edit button. And we've given you that option to make a change to that cap limit for whatever reason, if uh, that cap limit is wrong. Okay, so let's prepare these events for Lodgman then. So what you can do is you can click on the PDF icon on the screen to prepare the T-bar individually for each event. Or you can select the checkbox on the left-hand side. And on the right-hand side, you can click on the print icon to prepare the T-bar on a member level. So just a note with this is that you can only select up to four events for a member to report on one form. Alternatively, you can bulk prepare T-bar across multiple events and across multiple funds can do so by heading to the T-Bar management screen. So heading to connect on the left-hand side menu, that's where you can find T-Bar management or directly on the screen, on the top right-hand side, we have a toggle to for the global view and that will take you to that screen. So here is T-Bar management. And from here, you can select the lodging party. So that will filter out the events for the funds that are attached to that particular lodging party. Uh, so if you haven't seen the lodging party before uh, or the screen before, can navigate to settings on the left-hand side and select lodging party from there. So from here, you can add a new lodging party. So you can add a multitude of different lodging parties on the screen. And what you just need to ensure is that the fund, it is attached to that particular lodging party. So I have my fund already attached. And so I can just go ahead and hit save. Okay, so now heading back to the T-bar management screen, uh, we're now ready to prepare these events. And uh, what you can do is you can select all on the left-hand side, or maybe just those events individually. And if you have already lodged those events before, so perhaps you've recorded the historical events and you know that they've already been reported to the ATO, from the screen, what you can do is you can mark it as lodged. So you can put in the date that it's been lodged, put any comments and just mark it as lodged. Now going back to the outstanding tab, I have here two events that needs to be lodged and reported to the ATO. So now selecting all, or maybe just those events individually. And on the right-hand side, we're going to prepare T-bar. So a validation process has run and you can see here that it is passed. And the reason behind that is because I've already completed some prerequisites for preparing T-bar for this fund. Uh, so what you need to ensure so these are the prerequisites. So you need to ensure that a lodging party is attached to the fund, as I showed earlier, where the contact details include the contact name, ABN, phone number, street address, and email address. Uh, the fund ABN needs to also be recorded in fund details and can actually use analytical insights to review this information at the firm level. Uh, my colleague Rocco had run a great webinar on this early this week, so feel free to check out that recording. Uh, member TFNs need to also be recorded against the contacts. And of course, uh, having the transfer balance events recorded in the transfer balance dashboard. And once this is done, the validation will pass. If the validation has failed, 
uh, the error message will let you know of the details of what is missing. Okay, so heading now back to the T-bar management screen. Uh, you can see here that a file will be downloaded to my downloads folder. And we do recommend in enabling pop-ups for your browser so that there, there is nothing that is blocking, uh, blocking the download of the file. Uh, but what you can actually do is in the prepare tab, you can re-prepare T-bar. So that will enable you to re-download that file. And that could be especially useful if you've lost or misplaced the T-bar file as well. And just important to note here as well that the XLS and PDF file in the prepare tab of the screen it is just for your own in-house use only. So you can't actually lodge those files to the ATO. It is just for your own in-house use only. And another thing to note is that you can push those events back to outstanding if you'd like. So that's an option there as well. Uh, so now uh, in my downloads folder, so hopefully you can see that, uh, I've got a file here and it's noted with the event batch ID. And that's what I'll need to lodge with the ATO before the lodgement due date. So it's important to note that there is no direct lodgement from Simple Fund 360 to lodge those T-bar events. Uh, so you will need to head to the tax agent portal or uh, business portal to lodge those events. And we have a help article on this as well. Uh, so I'll just bring that up on my screen. So it is called T-Bar Management. And if you were to scroll all the way in the very bottom, we have detailed how you can navigate to the tax agent portal and lodge those files. So fortunately, I don't have access to the portal to show you that process on, the, on screen, uh, but this article will guide you through that process. And I'll link that as well in the chat box. Okay, so now if you are a trustee without access to this pl uh, platform, uh, what you can do is you can lodge the T-bar in its paper form via mail. Uh, so I'll show you how to do that as well. So straight from the T-bar management screen, on the right-hand side, and emphasis here is on the very right-hand side, you'll find a PDF icon. So that is for uh, T-bar in its paper form. Um, alternatively, you can go through the transfer balance dashboard and you'll find that PDF icon there as well. We can tick the checkbox besides those events to lodge at a member level as I showed earlier. Uh, but this form right here, it will detail the, uh, the event. Uh, so we've got our basic details there and it's ticked off that event as well. So we can make changes on the screen as well. And on the very bottom, so if I were to scroll all the way down, uh, that is where the trustee, tax agent, or authorized representative can sign before it's lodged via mail. Uh, so down below, it does detail the postal address. Okay. Uh, so once it is lodged uh, by those means, so whether it's through the tax agent portal or via mail, uh, the system, it's not going to be aware of it. So that's why on the screen, we've given you an option to tick the event batch ID. So that can be reconciled against the tax agent portal as well. And on the right-hand side, you can then mark it as lodged. So that's to let yourself and other users know that it's been successfully reported to the ATO. So you can put in the date lodged, any comments as well, and then mark it as lodged. Okay, so finally, let's look at the process involved with canceling events. Uh, so we make mistakes, we're only human, and uh, there are two different situations that you could be in. Okay, so one, you haven't lodged those events yet and would like to make an amendment. So in this case, you can simply move those events back to outstanding and edit the relevant debit or credit events, or even add a manual adjustment to re-prepare the bulk T-bar file. 
So in this case, uh, those events may just be sitting in the prepare tab. You could move them back to outstanding and you can head straight back to the transfer balance dashboard, make any relevant adjustments and it'll automatically be reflected in the T-bar management screen where you can re-prepare T-bar from there. Now, the second scenario is that you'd like to make an amendment to events that were already lodged. So in this case, you'd have to cancel and lodge the original event from the T-bar management screen and lodge a new report to provide the correct information. As uh, so in this case, there is two separate uh, reports to lodge. One is the cancellation event and the other is a T-bar with the correct information. All right, so just to show you what this looks like. So in the Lodge tab, I have already lodged these two events. So what I can do is I can click on the event batch ID on the left-hand side, or maybe just those events individually. So maybe it's just for my commutation that I've just processed. And on the right-hand side, I can mark it as canceled. So we can put in the cancellation date, any comments and mark it as canceled. So that will push it to the outstanding tab. So here, what you'll notice is that we've got an orange icon besides those events. And that orange icon, that is your cancellation event. And that will detail the original uh, event or the original uh, debit amount here in this case. So step one is to cancel and lodge the original event. So ticking the checkbox to the left of the cancellation event, on the right-hand side, we can prepare T-bar. A validation has run, a file has been downloaded. You can go ahead to the tax agent portal or business portal to lodge those events. And once done, we can then mark it as lodged. So that's step one done. Now sitting in my outstanding tab, what you'll notice here is that we have the event still there. And that is because we need to lodge another event with the right details. So now heading back to the transfer balance dashboard, I can proceed to edit that event. So we have the commutation here. I did not mean $20. What I meant was 20% of the balance. So on the right-hand side, we can click on edit and I can put in the right details. So I'll just enter that in. There we are. Now what you can do is you can go to the T-bar management screen. It will be accurately reflected and you can go ahead to proceed with that lodgement. But before you do that, it is just very important to let you know that the transfer balance dashboard, it is kept separate to the transaction list. So where you are adding or removing or even editing the events on this dashboard, it will not update the transactions itself from the transaction list. So for example, if the commutation had an incorrect balance, I've made the change in my transfer balance dashboard. But if I were to go into my transaction list, you can see here that the original amount is still showing. So in this case, the best way to process this is to delete the commutation journal and reprocess it. So I'm just going to delete this transaction. We'll reprocess the commutation. So we'll head back to our transaction list, processing the commutation once again for John Jones. So everything still stays the same. The date of the transfer is 1st of July, 2021. It's to an existing accumulation account. And um, what's great is that we have the member code already saved. Now we're clicking no for the entire balance being taken out. And what I meant was 20% of the member's balance and down below. And just to let you know as well, so you can see here that we have a transfer balance cap summary, but it's not going to trigger a duplicate event. So it's going to recognize that it's already in our transfer balance dashboard. Uh, so it's just going to simply update the amount if it hasn't been already. So it's not going to trigger uh, another event. 
All right, so I'm just gonna hit save. And if I were to head to my transaction list, it is accurately reflected. And if I were to head into my transfer balance dashboard, it is accurately reflected again. So there it is. So if I hadn't made that change before and just reprocess the commutation, it will accurately reflect on this event as well. And if I were to now head to the T-bar management screen, I can now prepare T-bar with the right details, all right? So what I can do is on the left-hand side, ticking on the checkbox on the right, preparing T-bar, validation has run, it is passed, a file has been downloaded, and I can launch that with the ATO. Once it's launched, we can tick the checkbox to the left that for the event batch ID, and on the right, mark it as launched. So that is step two done with lodging the right details. All right, and there we have it. So we've learned a lot of things today. So we've had a brief on what T-Bar is, how it is managed in the transfer balance dashboard and the T-Bar management screen. And we've looked at the lodgement process and how to proceed with canceling those events. So that comes to the end of today's webinar and to the end of our Simple Fun 360 Education Week. Uh, so I just want to thank you all for your time and for attending and most importantly for supporting the sessions within the past five days. Uh, so it's been a pleasure to host these sessions for you. And all right, so looks like questions have dried up, so we'll end it there. Uh, thank you all once again for attending and also staying back for questions. And I just want to thank all those who have helped with answering those questions as well and uh, wishing you all a great weekend ahead. Thanks.